right, now we're going to talk about the concept of electric field. Now, electric field is a concept that usually doesn't come up until the second semester of physics. So there's probably a lot of you that haven't really encountered this concept yet. Um, but even though, you haven't encounter, even though you might not have encountered it yet, we can still use the concept of um, ratio units to try to get a grip on what it means. Uh, you can see that the, ratio, uh, that the units per um, field are newtons per coulomb. Newtons per coulomb. Now I'm going to tell you that newtons is the unit for force, and coulombs is the unit for charge, in case you haven't encountered those yet in your class. So let's say I tell you that the electric field at this point on the blackboard is 5 newtons per coulomb. If I tell you that the electric field at this point on the blackboard is 5 newtons per coulomb, now, based on what I've already given you, you should be able to maybe figure out what it means. What does it mean if the electric field at this point is 5 newtons per coulomb? I'm trying to pause the video and give that a little thought. Okay, well, let's combine this into a single ratio. So, if the electric field here is 5 newtons per coulomb, what that means is if I placed a 1 coulomb charge at this point on the blackboard, it would feel a force of 5 newtons. I'll repeat that. If I placed a 1 coulomb charge at this point on the blackboard, it would feel a force, an electric force, of 5 newtons. That's what it means if I say the electric field at this point is 5 newtons per coulomb. Notice again that this is a completely hypothetical um, idea. This is telling us what the force would be if there was a 1 coulomb charge at this point. Now in actuality, of course, there are no charges at this point. There are no charges here at all, so you can see that the electric field is a hypothetical concept. It tells you what would happen if you put a 1 coulomb charge at a point. Now it's possible that there could actually be a 2 coulomb charge here, or a 10 coulomb charge here. Um, or it's possible that there might be no charge at all. This just tells us hypothetically what would happen if there was a 1 coulomb charge. But remember we saw when we were talking about prices, even having a hypothetical piece of information can be very useful to you. Because if you know what the force would be on a 1 coulomb charge, it shouldn't be hard to figure out what the force would be on a 2 coulomb charge, or a 3 coulomb charge. We're not going to do that right now in the videos, but hopefully you can already kind of see how you could do that. Um, you, hopefully it should already be apparent. Um, that knowing that a 1 coulomb charge would feel 5 newtons of force, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out how much force a 2 coulomb charge would feel, or a 3 coulomb charge uh, would feel. So now we're already starting to see why it's useful to have this concept of electric field. Alright, so again, many of you might not have encountered this concept before, but uh, if you're in the second semester of physics, you've definitely encountered this concept, and this, is one, one of, uh, this I think, is one of the more confusing concepts in physics, uh, but there's no reason for electric field to be such a confusing concept. If you just keep in mind that it has a ratio unit, it's much easier to understand what it means when we say that an electric field is 5 newtons per coulomb. This is a concept that gives people a lot of trouble. Let's do one more example. Let's say that this point on the blackboard has an electric field of 8 newtons per coulomb. At this point on the blackboard, there's an electric field of 8 newtons per coulomb. Of course, in reality, there's no electric field on this blackboard, but let's just pretend. Um, suppose that there was an 8 uh, newton per coulomb electric field at this point. Try to pause the video and articulate, what does that mean? Well, we combine the number with the units, and now we can see that it means that if we placed a 1 coulomb charge at this point, it would feel an electric force of 8 newtons. That's the meaning of that electric field. So now it should be easy for us to figure out what the force would be if we placed a 3 coulomb charge here, say.
what does it mean if you have a 1.5 volt battery? Now again, this is a very um, everyday common sense type of example, because uh, this is a very uh, common standard type of battery. Many batteries are 1.5 volt batteries. But what does it mean when we say a battery is a 1.5 volt battery? Well, first of all, I have to tell you that the volt really is a ratio unit, because it turns out that this really means that you have 1.5 volts. 1.5 volts is actually 1.5 joules per coulomb. volts is really 1.5 joules per coulomb, so a volt really is a ratio unit. Uh, we already saw in the previous example that coulomb is a measure of charge, uh, and I think earlier we also saw that joules are a measure of energy. So now try to pause the video and articulate to yourself, what does it mean to have a 1.5 volt battery? Now remember the whole point of a battery is to deliver energy to um, a device or an appliance. Uh, the point of the battery is to deliver energy to the appliance, but it would be interesting to know how much energy is being delivered. Um, well, the energy is delivered when charge is transferred through the battery. When charge is transferred through the battery, um, when charge passes through the battery, um, that allows the battery to deliver energy. Well, obviously, the more charge that's transferred, the more energy the battery is going to be able to deliver. So what does it mean if you have a 1.5 volt battery? It means that if the battery transfers one coulomb of charge, that will allow it to deliver 1.5 joules of energy to the appliance. If the battery transfers one coulomb of charge, that will allow it to deliver 1.5 joules of energy to the appliance. That's the meaning of saying that you have a 1.5 volt battery. Again, you can see how hypothetical this is. We're not saying that you're actually transferring one coulomb of charge through the battery. Uh, you could be uh, transferring uh, more or less than one coulomb. It's possible that the appliance isn't even turned on, and then you're not transferring any charge. Um, so it's possible there's no charge at all going through, and then there would be zero joules of energy um, being provided. But hypothetically, a 1.5 volt battery, if it transferred one coulomb of charge, that would allow it to deliver 1.5 joules of energy. And now it shouldn't be too hard to figure out um, if the battery actually transferred two coulombs of, or three coulombs of charge, it should be simple to see how much energy that battery would be able to provide. So now we can see why it's useful to know the voltage of a battery. The voltage allows you to calculate how much energy um, that battery um, can provide as long as you know how much charge is being transferred. All right, well, the concept that's measured in volts um, has a bunch of different names. It could be called the electric potential, uh, or maybe better to call it the electric potential difference, or the voltage. Um, usually the symbol for it is V, or maybe delta V. Um, and again, this is one of the, um, the concepts that gives people the most difficulty um, in second semester of physics, the concept of voltage, or potential difference. Uh, but hopefully, now that we know that volts are joules per coulomb, just knowing that should make the concept much clearer and much easier to work with. Uh, so hopefully now we've gotten some insight into what voltage means or what potential difference uh, means because potential difference and voltage are measured in joules per coulomb. Um, so for example, if you have a battery with a voltage of 1.5 joules per coulomb, that just means that for every one coulomb of charge that's transferred, the battery can deliver 1.5 joules of energy. Um, I should say that, again, if you are a physics student, um, and if you are in the second semester of physics, um, one thing I've noticed is um, that even after students have studied voltage and electric potential, very few students know that a volt is joule per coulomb. Very few students have memorized that volts are joules per coulomb, but that's crucial. Um, so. Uh, if you are in your second semester of physics and you've already studied these concepts, it's crucial that you make a flashcard and memorize right now what a volt is. A volt is joules per coulomb. Uh, and now we've seen why it's so crucial, because if you know 
um, that a volt is a ratio unit, and if you know um, what are the units that it's a ratio of, it makes it much easier to interpret and understand what we mean when we talk about voltage. Uh, I should mention that I was just talking, uh, I, I've mentioned a couple times how important um, the voltage is in physics, but actually that's an important concept in chemistry as well, uh, because in second semester of chemistry you go over electrochemistry, and you go over things like the cell potential and the cell voltage, uh, and then again it's really useful to understand what a volt is when you're talking about things like the cell voltage. 